North Korea successfully test-fired a new type of long-range cruise missile, which resembles the U.S.'s Tomahawk. According to the Korean Central News Agency, the test firings took place on the weekend without leader Kim Jong-un's attendance. It said the missiles traveled for 7,580 seconds along an oval and patterned eight flight orbits in the air above the territorial land and waters and had targets 1,500 kilometers away. The test firings came right after the North held a scaled-down military parade at midnight Thursday, possibly to demonstrate its military power in a low-level provocation without violating UN sanctions. Meanwhile, a North Korean propaganda outlet on Sunday blasted South Korea's midterm defense plan, which includes developing a massive ballistic missile as powerful as a tactical nuclear weapon, claiming that it is aimed at striking key facilities in the North. Difficulties finding Tel Aviv. But with this addition of the uh, correction, corrected trajectory section, they are capable of giving us some semblance of accuracy, and this is an original Iranian project. We don't see it anywhere else. It means that this gordy connection between Iranian and North Korean technology is not that tight anymore. And in my opinion, and I'll go into the uh, show to prove that point, that the pupils are now the teachers. That the Iranians have reached a level of proficiency which disconnected them from North Korea, and in some cases, they are more advanced than North Koreans. The satellite launcher, the Iranian satellite launcher, to my opinion, is more advanced than the North Korean satellite launcher. And we see with the missiles that the Iranians now are going to deploy a missile, which is nothing like the North Korean have. North Korean would like to have it, but they don't. So, the connection may be now the other way around, and I told my Japanese friends to start watching Iran not as a market for North Korean uh, 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 merchandise, but as a recipient of perhaps Iranian technologies. That means whatever in Iran should interest them as a possible threat to in East Asia too. I think this is an important uh, point to keep in mind. The for at least two decades now, North Korea has been acting behind the scenes to accelerate the Iranian ballistic missile program and perhaps many other parts of Iran's military industrial base. The first major Iranian ballistic missile, the Shahab-3, was widely viewed when it was first tested in 1998 to be a knockoff of the North Korean Nudong missile. The missile became operational in the Iranian Armed Forces in 2003, and Iran today fields one of the largest missile forces in the Middle East, largely because of the help it received from North Korean engineers. Very few people have been aware of the fact that Iran also received a missile known as the BM-25 from North Korea. This was originally a Soviet submarine-launched ballistic missile. And it came in two models. One was 2,500 kilometers uh, in range, and the second one was 3,500 kilometers in range. This missile, which was reconfigured to be used on land, gave Iran the capability of striking far outside of the Middle East. Indeed, those ranges give Iran the ability to hit as far as the English Channel. If North Korea is moving towards an international ballistic missile capability, it will be foolhardy not to consider that Iran will soon be there as well. Maintain Iran's defense capability. The Iranian Minister of Defense unveils the latest generation of indigenous cruise missiles built to enhance the Islamic Republic's power of deterrence. Officials say that mass production of the long-range surface-to-surface missile dubbed Sumar has already started. According to Iran's defense ministry, the Sumar is the most advanced cruise missile ever designed and built by experts at the Iranian Airspace Industries Organization. One of the main features of the long-range missile is its ability to hit targets with great accuracy. According to Iran's defense ministry, the Sumar enjoys modern technologies in navigation, propulsion and structure. 
The homemade missile can hit a broad range of targets in all circumstances by relying on its high tactical capabilities, long survival over the battlefield and radar evading properties. During the inauguration ceremony, Iran's defense minister referred to the production of Sumar as an effective step in boosting the country's defense and deterrent power. The designing and building of this weapon, whose navigation and propulsion systems and its structure enjoy complicated and new technologies, is seen as a wide stride taken to enhance the Islamic Republic of Iran's defensive and deterrence power. The ceremony also included the mass delivery of two types of missiles, Qaz and Qiyam, to the Islamic Revolution Guard Corps IRGC Aerospace Force. The Qaz ballistic missile and the Qiyam mid-range missile are capable of carrying diverse types of blast fragmentation warheads. Upon delivering the missiles, Commander of IRGC Aerospace Force Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizadeh said that Iran's missile technology advancements took place under sanctions imposed on the country. He added that his country's defense programs were non-negotiable. The efforts that take place today by the young scientists and experts of our Islamic country are advancing under the harshest sanctions, which have so far failed to disrupt the progress of the Islamic Republic's defense program. I must add that we won't negotiate over defense issues and our ballistic missiles with anyone. In recent years, Iran has made significant progress in its homegrown defense sector and has attained self-sufficiency in producing advanced military equipment and missile systems. Tehran says that its military might poses no threat to regional countries and the Islamic Republic's defense doctrine is entirely based on deterrence. Ami Mehdi Kazemi, Press TV. جنوای رئیس جمهور موشک شهید حاج قاسم موشک زمین به زمین است دارای برد 1400 کیلومتر مایل پرتاب کاملا تاکتیکی و متحرک و برخلاف تمام موشک های مشابه آن در دنیا مبتنی بر فناوری های کنترل پروازی و دینامیک پرواز است چیزی که در دنیا سابقه نداره و مشابه نیز نداره و امروز نیز خانواده موشک های برد بلند کروز برگ زرینی به افتخارات اضافه شده است که برد آن مثبت هزار کیلومتر است و نیاز تاکتیکی عملیاتی و سیناریوی عملیات نیروهای مسلح سربلند ما را تکمیل خواهد کرد موشک کروز شهید ابو مهدی قابلیت شلیک از عمق را دارد و در آینده نزدیک نیروهای دریایی کشور عزیزمون نیز به آن مجهز خواهد شد از موشک بالستیک شهید حاج قاسم سلیمانی و موشک کروز شهید ابو مهدی المهندس رونمایی بفرمایید علا برکت الله اللهم صل على محمد آل محمد خب به ارواح متحر همه شهدای دفاع مقدس به ویژه شهید حاج قاسم سلیمانی و شهید ابو مهدی درود میفرستیم این موشک انقدر ویژگی های منحصر به فرد داره که به نام نامی حاج قاسم شهید نامگذاری بشه دوازده ما در ورود به جب رو داره که میتونه از هر سفر دفاعی موشکی عبور کنه و لحظه اصابت هم پنج مخ سرعت داره که سرعت فقرد بالایی که با توجه به انواع سرهایی که داره میتونه تنوعی از استحقامات بتونی اهداف در اعماق زمین رو مورد هدف قرار بده و نابود کنه ما ملت شهادتی این جدید ترین موشک کروز ایران است با نام شهید ابو مهدی با برد بیش از هزار کیلومتر که یک در واقع پروژه بسیار ارزشمند و یک شاهکار در حوزه کروز دریایی محسوب میشه از عمق خشکی شلیک میشه و قابلیت عبور از نقاط میانی رو داره چند موشک رو بر علیه یک هدف استفاده کنیم با همون طراحی مسیر پروازی که خدمتشون عرض کردم که با قابلیت نرم افزاری توی سیستم کنترل آتش و هدایت کنترل این پیش بینی انعدام کامل دیگه انعدام کامل بله
وزارت دفاع و پشتیبانی نیروهای مسلح And I think the top of it all is the long expected strategic uh, land attack cruise missile which was anticipated since more than 10 years ago since they stole about 20 of them uh, Soviet made Soviet era KH-55 uh, airborne uh, strategic missile 3000 km missile from the Ukraine the Ukraine to repeat that story when the Soviet Union broke up um, some of the strategic forces of the uh, Soviet Union were marooned in Ukraine. There were strategic bombers and strategic nuclear-equipped uh, cruise missiles, airborne cruise missiles. By the INF, they couldn't have land uh, uh, um, terrestrial-based cruise missiles, but they had the uh, uh, air-based cruise missile. And that one uh, that they had, there about 500 of them, called the KH-55. That's uh, how it looks. And um, by agreement between Ukraine and Russia, they were all returned to Russia. Uh, for trade for gas. However, about 20 of them or so found their way uh, to North Korea, China, and uh, Iran. Um, three people were indicted for that in Russia. All of them mysteriously died. And nobody knows uh, anymore how it was done, but it was done. And obviously, from that point, it was obvious that this number of 20 is too small to use operationally, so it probably template for com for copying. And from that point on, I was predicting year after year the appearance of a 2,2500 kilometer land attack cruise missile, which will look like the Soviet one. In 2012, the Iranians disclosed that they have a program like that, but didn't show a picture, and they call it Mishkat. They claim the range of 2,000 kilometers. I'll explain why this number is kind of a holy number. It makes uh, political sense. The estimated range is about 2,500 kilometers. And obviously, it would, should have been patterned after the KH-55. And lo and behold, there it is, like a magician a few months ago. Here it is. But for some un reason which I cannot explain, they love playing around with name. Now it's not called the Mishkat. It's called Sumur. Range was not announced, but here it is. And very quickly, I put it on the drawing board and compared it to the KH-55. You can see the KH-55. Here is a shot of the Sumur. It's a spitting image. Obviously, this is not a Chinese copy. It's an Iranian copy, probably with a different engine. They have jet engines, perhaps from China, small jet engines. Small jet engines is a very clever thing to do. It's a very tricky. Uh, you have only one company in the United States that specialized with it. It's Williams Research. And uh, <clears throat> they may have bought a French design and upgraded it. But anyway, it's the same missile, same length, same diameter. Uh, you see the wing is exactly in the same place. Uh, the engine is in the same place, except that this is land-based. It takes off from the land. From land, we'll see a short video here, if it will, if it will work, of uh, its takeoff. According to Iran's defense... This is Iranian TV. The, the wings pop out when it goes out of the canister, they pop out. So this is, this is an achievement. This is a major technical achievement. It's not copying, it's, not, uh, it's even diff more difficult than designing a new one to do a good Chinese copy. So again, I take my hat off for the guys who did it technically. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see the Russian influence here. Since it's a ground-based uh, missile, they copied an air-based missile. It doesn't have a booster. It, it drops from an aircraft. So they needed to design a booster. And here is a de their design booster, and here is a Russian booster on the Russian club missile. The missile is different. But look at the booster, rocket motor, and look at the booster here. Well, it's not the same design, but you can see the Russian-style fingerprint of engineering here. <coughs> well, what is the strategic implication of this missile. It's, it's too small for a first generation nuclear bomb. Let's go back to this 2,000 kilometers. Uh, the rationale for the Iranian holy number, sacred number of 2,000 kilometers is that we are not attacking Europe. We are just threatening Israel. So for Israel, 2,000 kilometers is good enough. I mean, it can attack Israel from way back, go all the way almost to the Pakistani border. But even if they go to Debris, which is the Western Iran, they can't reach with 2,000 kilometers more of more than some countries in Eastern Europe, which are perhaps not too important. It's not Germany. 
They are very much afraid. Not, they don't want to irk uh, Angela Merkel, and not many people want to irk her. However, with this capability now of a cruise missile, which was once airborne and could be made again airborne, those guys have strategic air arm. Again, unadvertised. We are all hypnotised by their missiles, but they have long-range bombers. The capable Russian Sukhoi 24. And if they adopt an airborne version of that Sumur missile, they can fly 2,000 kilometers up to here in the middle of the Mediterranean, not in the direction of Europe, turn around and launch it north. And that will cover all of Europe. So under the radar, out of the attention, they are developing a European capability, which I suggest that people pay attention to. Going to this <clears throat> space.